So that's my rendering of it. I may be wrong. I may have some of that, you know, summarised, but that's from what, from what I've seen, uh, the true origin of tithing. A a tax introduced from approximately the 13th century, and then largely uh, changed from the 16th century. Uh, in fact, it was increased in certain places from then. So that's the that's my reckoning of it. And also, one of what we were talking about earlier today. Um, the ways, uh, one of the ways that they can actually uh, set it up to rob the temples and have more um, of their own uh, in in that process of, of their thievery. Sure. Right. As they were you know, leasing the people, or or however they wanted to tax them. All right, we have a question on the phone, and then we'll get back to several in the chat here. Uh, Ron, right. are you there? Ron? Yes, hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. How you doing? Hi. Very well, Ron. Hey, I have a couple of questions, and it's in regard to the new executor letter. First yep. of all, once you complete the, the, the deed of restitutum process, I think it's five separate documents, you know, you end up with judgment, and then you go into the executor letter. Do you send all four letters together as a package with the executor letter? Okay, excellent question. First off, you don't have to wait, and I'm, I'm going to have to make this clearer, you don't have to wait until you've completed the whole EDP process before you can use the executor letter. I want to make that clear. You don't have to. You just have to start the process. That's all. You don't have to finish it. You just have to start it. Okay. The second is, whenever you're sending anything to courts, and this has been a, a, a an issue that I, again, I apologise because it's been a testing process, is that the system will not recognise and therefore will not record our instruments without there being a form that they are prepared to accept. In other words there is a way to enter documents into the record by treating them as exhibits attached to affirmations. Um, and, and you've done this work too, Ron, so I would suggest you might want to quickly mention what I'm talking about, yeah? Yes, I will. Um, what I do, I'm embroiled in a federal criminal case. I, I wrote some maritime liens against federal prosecutors. So I'm in criminal court right now on that matter, but I have learned that by using a technique called a notice written on their their format, their court format, you just title it uh, Notice of Executor Letter, and then you, you go down in the body, you put in two paragraphs, and then you attach the documents as an exhibit. They will take them then. But in my case, they will not take anything with red fingerprints or blood. They've outlawed that. Um, so what I'm doing is scanning in the document and then reprinting on blue so the fingerprints are black instead of red. So that's how I'm getting around those little problems. Sure. Um, well, if anybody wants to know how I'm doing it, they can contact me. I think my... My email is on the U of U. I'm an administrator on the U of U, and I think somewhere Gerald's got me uh, listed. But it's uh, Ron Davenport's the full name. Ron, it'd be fantastic, and I really appreciate you sharing that. And of course, there'll be a slightly different format for people in different uh, different areas. There'll be people in Australia that have a different format to to Canada. But you, I really appreciate you sharing that because that is, again, a lesson learned on how to avoid these... Well, they're obstructions, aren't they? They're, they're deliberate or, or, or procedural instructions. And if we are standing as respectful, we need to honour that there are certain customs. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate that, Ron. Thank you. Okay, I have another question. It's uh, in regard to the, uh, the decree of nullity. Yes. The very top paragraph where it starts off on holy writ of pronuncio restitutum 
You come yep. down here and it says, then decided on, and then there's a Euclidean date and a Roman date. What yep. is then decided? Well, um, we have the is, issue date. We have the issue date, but, but the decided date uh, will be, very good question, but the decided date should ultimately be the same as the issue date of the decree of nullity. Okay. Because when you're issuing a judgment in their system, there's a form of action being the writ, then there's usually a hearing date, and then there's a de decision date um, in the process. Go and have a look at the you know Supreme Court judgments. Same thing. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Thanks. again, Ron. Very good, Ron. Thank you for those questions. And uh, thanks for uh, covering your situation a little bit there. All right, question um, on the chat, Frank. I'm physically dis disabled and receiving my only income from Social Security. Will an EDP end this? No. No, because this is, this is, the, this is the scenario. Firstly, the EDP makes clear makes absolutely clear that that you are not seeking to withdraw any benefit entitlements. What you're seeking is an accounting and a rendering on their part. Now, when people are concerned, they need to understand that over time they have written billions of dollars, not millions, but billions of dollars of instruments against you and your trusts. And all you're asking for is an accounting. Now, either they give up the instruments, which you can then live quite happily on in their system, or they do not. If they do not, then what you have then recorded through the process is their admission that they will pay for the expenses of the straw person. That the EDP is saying, we will take care of ourselves. We are not children, we're not minors, we're not lunatics, we're not idiots, we'll take care of ourselves. They cannot have it both ways. And they know they can't have it both ways. So the short answer I said is no. The long answer is I've said that they can't have it both ways. If they reject your EDP, then that's when we get to what we've spoken about. And I know people are waiting to hear the whole concept of set-off, which is basically saying to them, I, my straw man has these bills, pay them. Because you have admitted you want to remain the guardian of the straw man. Well, you're not guardian of me, you're guardian of the straw man. The straw man has these bills, pay them. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. All right, great. Thank, thank you, Frank. All right, uh, back to the phones again. So we have a guest 41 with a question. Uh, could you say your first name and um, say hello? Can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us? Guest 41? Guest 41, are you there? Yeah, can't, can't hear not them, hearing Sherry. Us. All right, That's try right. that again. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, um, another question for Frank. It says, uh, how might these creeps, I guess powers would be, try to combat Eucadia credits, or can they? And you're talking um, about the financial system. Well, okay. <clears throat> I, I know it's frustrating, but it, this knowledge has, has flooded through. I didn't realize that every one of their banks ultimately derives its a power as being a temple and that the production of private money is private temple money. And I didn't appreciate just how severe their injury, their sin against their own system is in spiritual embezzlement from the treasury of heaven, in robbing the treasury of heaven and in malfeasance. So I think they've got a lot of problems and I don't think they're going to view the most perfect and pure money system as a threat 
I think the only people that will view it as a threat on the way out are those people suffering stupidism. <laughs> I think I think the people that are looking for a solution are going to recognise that there is no way to bring back to life the dead cat. They've killed their legitimacy. Their legitimacy is over. Now, you know, do stupid people do stupid things? Yeah, they do stupid things every day. And we see that all the time. Uh, and is there a chance that there'll be someone stupid in their system wanting to, to do stupid things? Sure. But I, I'm, I'm erring on the way in which they have handled UK this so far, which is to give a wide berth and let things be finished, will, uh, will, is a sign that, uh, well, that they will let it be finished and, and, and let things take place. Other than that, I, I don't know what they will do. The ultimate question is, what will they do? I don't know. It's like someone saying, will they come and kill me? Maybe they will come and kill me, but I don't know and I certainly don't work on the basis that that is inevitable. So there you go. That's my honest answer. All right, great. Yeah, that's uh, well about as far as it can go for right now. Uh, but it seems that as they're on their way out, um, there are others uh, making uh, decisions as to what stands. Um, so I, that, I, yeah, I have the sense, and I have the sense that the auditing function that was previously abandoned for some decades has kicked back into life. That are the people that hold the system accountable, the ones in the shadows, the black-robed ones in the shadows that you never see, have kicked back into life. That appears to be what's occurring, but I can't prove it to you because I don't have a communication line to validate that. Yeah, it does appear to be that way, doesn't it? All right, next question. Uh, what is your opinion on right of self-determination, uh, beginning with your own state? Well, I mean, right of self-determination, you know, come back to come back to a question that people ask me quite often, and it's actually a really fair question. Someone says, why should I belong to any society? Why can't I simply state that I'm free, state that I am a living man, and live peacefully? And the answer is that in theory, if you were the only man or woman living on the earth, you could, of course you could do that but you're not the only living man or woman living on the earth. And in fact, most of us, if not all of us, live in a society. So, you know, taking a theoretical view that uh, you wish to be left alone and live on an island, unless we all lived on islands and we never had to deal with anyone else, that would be fine. But because we have to get along, because we have to relate, there has to be some common method of relating there has to be some common law for relating now if you want to make it real simple the simplest rule the rule that underpins everything in eukadia is what's called the golden rule the golden rule is the most important rule across eukadia and it is no one is above the law that's the meaning of the golden rule. I mean, you might read the golden rule as, as do unto others as you would do to yourself. That is an expression of no one's above the law. Everyone is, is, is equal. But so under self-expression if, in itself, um, if you want to, to stand up and say, I am uh, free, by all means, but you live in a society and if you choose to be separate, and stand out, then you really make yourself a target. And I hope people stop making themselves a target. I hope they start realizing that we need to work together. But, you know, a lot of us, you know, a lot of people feel that the way that they can best express it is going out there and being an individual. Well, us being divided is the reason that the system has continued so long. So if you want to perpetuate that, continue to be the individual. Or if you want to change that, come together as a model, not a doctrine, not a dogma, not a cult, a model, an idea, a tool, a toolkit. And let's see if we can improve that toolkit.
Right. Very, very good. Um, Frank, in, in one 